Well, welcome to a new Harry's Farm video. And this one is a bit of a special one because I've gone back to JCB to see what they're up to with their hydrogen development for their engines of the future. And I did a video with Lord Bamford almost two years ago. I can't believe it, it was July 2021. I went up there and they were just at the early stages to see if they could convert their diesel engines to hydrogen. And Lord Bamford gave me a call a couple of weeks ago and says, really, you ought to come up because we've really moved on from those early days and there's a more dedicated engine. And I think this is a very interesting direction of travel for how we're going to power our tractors in the future. And obviously at JCB, all their heavy earth moving equipment and also HGVs and the like of that. They can't all do it via batteries. So the video is going to kick off as I go into the engine plant itself. I'm going to meet Lord um, Bamford there and we'll go through some of the technical information on the engine. Now, I ought to say I have done a very similar video for Harry's Garage and the first sort of 17 minutes or so are just about the same because I thought it was important to get the tech of the engine over so we all understood how hydrogen engines work and how they relate to the current diesel engine. So let's go and next time you see us we'll be up at JCB at the Engine Innovation Centre. Here. Yeah, good to Aaron, see you again. Good to see you. And you. Welcome well, to JCB Power Systems. Well, this is where it all happens. This is your engine plant, etc., isn't Very it? Much. All here. And uh, I'm, yeah, thank you so much for this invite to uh, go through the hydro. It proved really popular, that video we did last time. I couldn't I believe know. it. But that was two years ago. I know. But a lot has happened in, in the meantime. And so we're going to go through here, and this is where you've got what today? We're going to see a new engine. You're going to see a, a new engine and eventually you'll, get, you'll see it being made on the production line. They're, they're pre-production prototypes. Oh, really? That far? And you'll see them on the test cells eventually, and you'll see the machines working, and, uh, and that'll be it. OK, <laughs> let's crack on. All right, let's Thank do that. You. This is the, the engine, and this is now our 50th, 55th, something like that engine we've made. Really? Um, we are making uh, 200 diesel engines a day here in this in this plant which you see around you. Do you know noise. there's a plant there? Would well, you? no. It's, it's fairly quiet. Yeah. This will be made on the same line and there'll be hydrogen, 100% hydrogen. I'm going to talk to Ryan later yes, uh, who's Ryan, obviously yeah. this is his baby but how much is new? Is it new from there up? It, it's new from there up but from two years ago, an enormous amount of development has yeah. gone into it. And things like pistons are different, valves are different. Oh, I, okay. mean, you, I mean, you see them, you can identify it all, obviously, but, but they are different. Right, um, okay. And the great thing is, that around the world, um, our own engineers will be able to, to work on them. And yeah. so would farmers, uh, uh, if they need to strip the engine, they would know what to do. It's yeah. the same, same uh, well, very similar to, to a normal diesel engine. Well, Good. I can't wait to learn more and Good. just sort of challenges. You know, it was very interesting, the comments we got back on that video. People are, want to know where they're going to get hydrogen from, how green this hydrogen going to be, course. and how the emissions on this truly are just yeah, water there was a talk of knox but i think that's going to what we ought to get ryan in to explain that how but far if, he's if developed it if you think back there harry two yeah. years ago yeah i think we were regarded as being a bit eccentric yeah a bit nutty yeah. you know and could this ever work yeah well it's working and and it's it's here there is a problem on where we get the fuel from yeah but you know around the world uh, countries are looking at, at making the units to make the, the, the electrolyzers to actually make hydrogen. Yeah, well, you, one of the challenges is whether it's going to be worldwide, and you'll um, obviously have that plant in India. Yes. Uh, would they be doing this as well? Oh, very much so. Well, first of all, we'll be making the identical engine in, um, in India, in Jaipur. Yeah. We make 200 a day at the moment, and we've been make, making 200 hydrogen engines eventually there. Um, but they need 
hide from desperate day in India. They import all oil and all gas. They have none of their own. But right. they do have rather a lot of sun. <laughs> so they could easily make. I so, mean, eventually they uh, could easily make it. Oh, right. And they're committed. Uh, but many countries are committed now to hydrogen. Right. Yeah. Excellent. Right. Well, I think I ought to just swap over to Ryan and he can just that. give me the details yes, of it. Excellent. Thank you, Lord Bedford. Ryan, thank you ever so much for joining me here. This is your baby, isn't it, of working on this engine? Yes, it is. It is, absolutely. Um, it's not just my baby, actually. It's an <laughs> entire team of about 150 people now. And you head up the sort of engine development side of things, yeah, don't you? that's right. Yeah, that's so you right. were given the challenge by Lord Manford two, just over two years ago, wasn't it, to convert one of their engines to hydrogen? Um, yes, yes, that's, that's essentially true. Um, yeah. What I would say is, though, that, that this isn't a conversion. Um, right. We, we started with the DNA of our diesel engines, which clearly we know and love, um, and then we went all the way back to first principles and understood that actually doing, doing a conversion actually doesn't work very well. Right. So we've completely reinvented the engine. Oh, OK. We've, we have kept the DNA of it, so it is familiar. It's the same capacity. It's got the same bottom end, that nice rugged diesel bottom end, but it is a completely new engine. I really stress that it's not it's not a conversion. Oh really? So it has changed because last time I visited it was very much a conversion I felt. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so oh. I, I think the first engine that you saw was a, what we would call a proof of concept engine. So it was yeah. just exactly that, just demonstrating the concept that, that, that we could achieve what we needed to. This is very different. This is this is one of our pre-production prototype engines. So yeah. this is really building up to making a commercial proposition that we're going to sell and put into our machines. That's the bit, well, we'll go through some things there. I didn't realise that actually on the line, yeah. doing this engine now, you're at that stage, aren't yeah. you? Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's important because as well as validating the design of the engine, we're also validating the, the production process as it well. It does actually work. Okay, you were just going to take me through some quick PowerPoint here yes, of, so yeah. we can start talking yeah. about the actual engine itself and what you've done. The bit I can't get over, a diesel engine is loaned for, for its low down torque, yeah. etc. This is a spark ignition engine and to get high torque you used to have very high compressions but you can't get diesel type compressions can you with hydrogen? You can't quite get to diesel compression ratio, you can get closer than you might think, yeah. um, certainly more than a gasoline engine, um, but a lot of it, the, the, We've matched the torque curve of our diesel engine. So for, first and foremost, you can overlay the torque curve of our hydrogen engine really? and our diesel engine, and they're line on line. And how different are the revs at that power? Exactly so, the same. Are they? Yeah, so this so is just revs to two and a half? So, so two, 2,200 RPM, peak Good power, Lord. peak torque at, at 1,200 RPM, Good 440 Lord. Newton meters, 1,200 RPM, just off idle. Lots of torque. You need that when you're yeah. pushing into the you know yourself yeah. when you're rehandling on a farm you need lots of shove lots of grunt oh really uh, so we're not going to notice preserved. the difference we're not no. between no. Uh, from talk no. point of view the Good only Lord. difference you'll notice yeah. is a bit quieter right i suppose I so it's a great thing yeah um yeah so so first key technical challenge is getting the mixing right and, and yeah. like i said we've really obsessed about that the next key technical challenge is is an enabler really to that mixing you mentioned about how lean you need to run it, so now we need to get much more air into the engine. Uh, so we've had to really develop the turbocharger, and, and what you'll see on this engine is it's quite a small turbocharger, yes. but it spins very, very high speed, it's low inertia, so it gets lots of air into the engine really quickly. Oh, uh, right. So you don't get that turbo lag that you've got on the old like, 911 turbo type scenario. It's a small, low inertia, high speed turbo, drives lots of air in, very very quickly. So sorry, are you working at higher boost pressures than perhaps you higher would on a diesel? Higher boost pressures, yeah, higher boost pressures. And by a factor of what? Let's say several times. Several times? Yeah, several times. Oh really? Um, so so right. we're pushing more air through than a diesel yes. engine. So third challenge is all about combustion. So you know a diesel engine, it's all about compression ignition, you squash that mixture, you yeah. get it very hot, very high pressure. This is different, it's much lower pressure, so you don't get that auto ignition, you now have to ignite it with a spark plug. So we're taking the diesel injectors out, that's great, we don't need yeah. those anymore. Yeah. We've got the hydrogen injectors to get the hydrogen in, and then where the diesel injectors would have gone, 
we've, we've put a spark plug in that place. And that, that ignites that hydrogen and, and air mixture, the oxygen, and, and gives us that H2O. Um, and, it, and it releases the power from that hydrogen, the, the stored energy to, to give us the, uh, the power in the combustion. And there were a lot of comments on the last video who says, oh, it's got very high NOx. There's a real issue of NOx on hydrogen engines. What would you say to that? It's all about the leanness of that burn. Okay. Um, this is a low temperature, low pressure combustion. So, you know, quick, quick chemistry lesson, I suppose. We're surrounded by nitrogen now. 71% of what we're breathing is, is nitrogen. Um, if you get nitrogen really hot, you can create NOx. Okay. So our secret, or it's not a secret really, but the way that we've gone about it is we don't get it as hot. So okay. you keep the temperature down, you don't form the NOx, and you get a zero emission product. Interesting. And, and it was those first conversion projects going yeah. back 20, 30 years that didn't tackle that. And that's why we instantly recognise, you know, that's, that's not the right solution for us. Okay. So hence it's, a, it's, it's not a conversion, it's a, it's a complete new conversion Brilliant. process. Brilliant. And, and really what does that give us? It gives us steam. You know, yeah. and that's all we've got to manage now is, yeah. is, is the steam that we create from combusting hydrogen with, with oxygen. Yeah. Uh, and, and as you know, you get H2O. Yeah. Um, and not, not too much of it. And, and it's, it's what we call dry steam. So it's not like boiling your kettle, no. making a cup of tea. It's much higher temperature than that. Um, so it's, it's dry steam. Uh, and we manage that in the engine and we, you know, when it comes out through the exhaust pipe and, and okay. you know, no problem. So the exhaust system, do you have to have anything like catalysts or particulate filters or anything like so, that? So it's a much, much cleaner combustion. You know, there's no carbon in the fuel. Yeah. Uh, so you're not creating CO2, first and foremost. You're not creating particulates because there's no carbon that you're burning. Uh, we've dealt with the NOx because we're running really, really lean. So you end up with a really clean solution that doesn't need all the, let's say, the paraphernalia that you get yeah. on a modern diesel engine or, or even a petrol engine. So it's a much more elegant solution right. uh, from an engineering perspective, you yeah. know, light simplicity, and it's a much more simple, oh. simple solution. So turn to the engine then. How, are you confident this is almost production ready? We're not on a five year journey from here. You no, no. think this is it? It's, very close to being the final production version of the engine um, wow. and, and to be honest the changes that we're now making they'll be almost imperceivable you know a tweak to a bit of micro geometry here or an optimization of a calibration there really. yeah, it's, it's all uh, it's all more or less as you see um, wow it's a very very much a mature product god so we have the solution so now we've got to get market acceptance and the blue the hydrogen green hydrogen isn't it correct yeah. so you're just going to go through durability trials and that sort of thing now yeah, yeah we've got a, a really busy summer ahead of us yeah. and we'll be doing all the usual things that you would imagine so we'll be going to high altitude hot temperatures cold temperatures um, testing when it's dry testing it when it's wet you know all yeah. of those good things um, so that's our summer planned out for right. us um, lots of lots of testing lots of learning um, and getting ourselves ready for, for production real soon but there's no issues, is there, with super cold running, is there, or with no, hot, no. but it runs cool, so... It runs slightly cooler. Yeah. Um, the actual uh, radiator temperatures, etc., are the same, uh, so oh, the, okay. the, the coolant system is the same. Um, it's actually slightly easier to start when it's cold, because you're oh, not okay. relying on that compression ignition, yeah. as you are with a diesel, to, to generate heat. It's all spark ignited, so... Good. Um, in many respects, it's, it's marginally, I wouldn't say easier, because it's just a different set of challenges, yeah. but it's, it's certainly no worse. Do you carry on developing diesel engines? Uh, well, there will inevitably still be a need for diesel engines. Um, there will be new emissions rules coming for diesel engines. Yeah. Um, but we really see that, obviously, the future is hydrogen, you know, and, and so therefore we, you know, we've got to really focus our efforts now on, on the hydrogen right. engine. Uh, the nice thing is, some of the stuff we're learning on the hydrogen engine about efficiency and making a lower friction engine and a more efficient yeah. engine, we can, we can do that on the diesels as well and make those yeah. more fuel efficient. So we're maintaining all the same service intervals, and as I said earlier, it's the same torque curve, same power curve, um, and what we're really pleased with, peak efficiency, 
little bit better than a diesel. So is it? We've pushed so ourselves really hard on all of the attributes, including efficiency, uh, right. to make sure that. For me, it only makes sense to a customer if the customer doesn't have to adapt the way they use the machine. They need to be able to use the machine in exactly the same way. So that's what we've really pushed ourselves on. And I'm trying to think, how do you measure efficiency on a hydrogen engine? Are you talking about kilos burnt or litres burnt? How do you do yeah, it? Yeah, well, it's, it's kilos. It's, it's kilos per, we measure it as kilos per, or grams per kilowatt hour of power produced. Um, and that's exactly the same way as we measure it on a diesel. So we measure right. how many grams of diesel for one kilowatt hour and same for hydrogen, grams of hydrogen per kilowatt hour. Right, so you buy hydrogen by the kilo. You buy it by the kilogram, yep. yeah. Um, Pressurise it into your tank and you store X kilograms on board your machine. And then you, your fuel gauge, if you like, on your machine is actually just tank pressure. And obviously it just depletes over time um, and then you refill it. You're saying, if the price parity between hydrogen and diesel was the same, you'd actually have a smaller bill if you're running on hydrogen. But I'm trying to think how how to do it. It, it is a bit complicated. Hydrogen's got more energy for a kilogram than it has for diesel. Yeah. So you need to sort of do that conversion in your head to start with. Um, but but yeah, for us the, the challenge is is that you know the hydrogen industry, if you like, it's all about getting the cost down. Yes. And and once it gets down to you know sort of free dollars three euros a kilogram you're then more or less at price parity with diesel oh, are you? in terms of a, from an energy perspective and you um, were saying earlier that in the states they're trying to get that down to a dollar for a kilo yeah so there's quite, there's quite a few countries now in on you know that have got that that strategic ambition and it's dead easy to remember it's a dollar a kilogram in the next decade so it's you know india have got that ambition the us have got that ambition Really? And they're investing to, to achieve God. the really So efficient. if you get to that point, well then hydrogen will be cheaper to run than diesel? Uh, correct, yes. God. Yeah. And that's within yeah. the next decade? Yep, yeah. yeah, that's where an awful lot of investment is going at the moment into, into creating hydrogen. Well, no wonder Lord Bamford is so keen on yeah, it then. Yeah, yeah. It's a, I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's just a super proposition in every way you look at it. You know? yeah. and for us, it, it's quick to deploy. Yes. You know, we often say it's a climate emergency. Yes. And we all recognise that. So you've got to react quickly to an emergency. So we've got to shape up to it. Yeah. And do something about it now. And that's this technology this that's what it. allows us to do that really quickly. Could you ever envisage retrofitting this to an existing engine? Um, to an existing engine, it's quite difficult because it's a, there's so many changes to, to create the hydrogen engine. Okay. Uh, so I, I would think of it more as a repowering opportunity than a retrofitting of an existing oh, engine. Okay. So you take one engine out, put another engine in. Um, clearly there's the hydrogen storage tanks and the infrastructure on the machine, but, uh, but it's yeah. all a tantalizing proposition. Yeah, intriguing. Right, yep. well thank you ever so much, Ryan. It's okay. been absolutely no fascinating to see the inner workings of JCB in this secret lab. Well, Tim, we're now going to look at some machines. This is your part of this, isn't it? This yeah, this is the exciting, where we're starting to build our hydrogen production range. Yeah. So this is our first machine, the backhaul loader. So we've yes. got a hydrogen engine on board this. Um, yes. Amazingly, the engine is exactly the same in terms of physical size. So this yeah. machine has the same loader arms, the same chassis, same cooling pack, drops in beautifully. And if you're an operator on board the machine, the only difference you would know, machine yeah. performs in exactly the same way, yeah. same power, um, same dig, dig capability, the machine is exactly the same until you come to refuel it. Yeah, I can't, well the other thing that's changed is the colour. I ought to just say, um, I always thought JCBs were yellow, but uh, there's, this has changed colour. I'm <laughs> sure we'll get back one day to the, uh, the JCB, <laughs> Whenever. Yellow, but, but I think for the excitement of yeah. the um, of the project we've decided to, uh, yeah. to give these colours to, to let them stand out. I can understand it. Now where are the tanks on this now? So the engine, engine is a standard, yeah, Sorry. and on this machine we've got the tanks situated on this side. So this, uh, is, where, okay. this is where our traditional fossil fuel yeah. tank would be. Yeah. And as you can see we've got a number of tanks in here. Okay. So they're cylinders, 350 bar gas, this is where we refuel them. Ah. So we've got a sub-assembly of four tanks and a further, a further tank at the back. Backhaul right. customers across the world do uh, different hours. Some do very yeah. high hours, some do very low hours. 
So our thinking is we do really like auxiliary tanks, we do a base unit, and then for people that want to travel longer distances or do many hours, we, we oh, add okay. some auxiliary tanks. Okay, has the technology changed on? It looked like a carbon fibre tank, or is it a, because isn't it? Yeah, this is, a, this is carbon fibre, so yeah. you can get a number of different designs. You can have either a steel, um, yeah. you can have an aluminium alloy tank then wrapped by, by carbon, or you can have maybe a plastic tank wrapped by carbon. Um, but actually the, the technology is pretty straightforward now. We're starting to see more and more volumes of, of yeah. these types of tanks being designed and supplied. Right, because it, it's always, you know, the people, the tractors say, oh, the tanks, it leaks and etc. But you're overcoming None of these, that. Yeah, we're, we're, we're very confident with the, the tank designs that we've got. Right. They're 350 bar within the tank. Yeah. Then we have a regulator and then we go down to pretty much low pressure as we go to the, to the engine. Oh, OK. Right. Now, hydrogen isn't freely available as diesel is, but you've got this, haven't you? Yeah, so what we decided is, most of, everyone in our industry today is used to having a diesel bowser. Yeah. What's a diesel bowser? It's a tank with diesel in and, and we transport yeah. the diesel to the machines. Yeah. I think 97% of our machines in the construction world, we take the fuel to the machine. Right. It allows the machine to keep working every day. So what we did is we decided we would design a refueling machine. So this is one of our fast track tractors. Uh, yeah. We've put a hydrogen engine on board. And then what we did is we extended the rear chassis just I slightly. I was say it's slightly longer wheelbase one. Slightly longer, but it's great to have the rear deck for use. Yeah. And then what we built is this, um, this hydrogen tank really. So this, this is a hydrogen refueler. So in here we've got around 100 kilograms of hydrogen. We work at about a 500 bar pressure. I could just break off there. You said a hundred kilos of hydrogen. If I, that looks like a spray bowser to me, I think that would hold about three thousand, four thousand liters. But how's it? Yeah, hydrogen because of the tanks, I suppose. Yeah. Isn't so it? one, one, basically one, one kilogram of hydrogen is around three liters of diesel. Right. And because we're in a gas form rather than a liquid, we, we're using a lot more volume in terms of space. So a hundred kilos of hydrogen how much is that going to take to refill that so this right. this machine would consume somewhere in the region of depending on the size of the machine anywhere from six to ten kilograms of hydrogen in a day so the beauty of that is we've got somewhere in the region of at least 10 if not 15 uh, refuels. refuels right so then that is feeding off another how it's delivered in yep. then I thought that would be bigger, to be perfectly well, honest. Well, we can, we can make it bigger. What we, what we decided, this would be a first off for us. Okay. When, we, when we're around the construction site, or, or you may be a rental company, and you've got this on the back of a kind of an eight to a 10 ton truck, yeah. what you don't want is it to be physically too big to allow for deliveries and close contact right. of machines. Yeah. So for us, it's, it's a bit like the old milk float, milk float as we talk yeah. about those, those deliveries, the drop-offs. Yeah. So we'll be backwards and forwards, recharge. This is a module, so it lifts on and off. So we can either bring it off by forks yeah. or by, uh, by sling. But I think over time we'll start to build a fleet of these machines that we use for, for yeah. delivery continually. Yeah, yeah. it's how I do the combine or something on the farm is obviously, like you say, the bowser comes out. You don't take the combine to the, the fuel right. tank. Yeah, keep it working, yeah. keep the machines working. Okay. So what we can do, if you like, we can get into the detail of how we refuel. Go on then, we're a refuel Mark, this. do you want to come and join us and show us how you refuel? So Mark's our expert refueler. This is our mobile hydrogen bowser. Yeah. And the best way we like to think of it is, this is our big balloon, big yeah. balloon of pressure. And we need to decant, cascade down into the low pressure, the smaller balloon, which at the moment is empty, which is the backer. Right. So to do that, we're going to lift the refueling nozzle off, which is here. And I'll let you hold that. Um, right, I've got three, so yeah. I'm looking at 350 bar is that machine, what's this at then? So this is a 500 bar. Oh, is it? So we cascade down from a high pressure to a low pressure, cleanly, right. safely and quickly. Let's couple them up. Right. And you'll notice compared to a normal diesel filling hose, there's two lines. Yeah. So one is the high pressure hydrogen, which takes from the refueler into the machine. Right. And the second is effectively a purge line. So you know when you're filling up diesel or petrol vehicles, you take your filler cap off and you can smell yes. petrol or diesel. With hydrogen, it's a sealed system. So not right. only is it very fast, it's a matter of minutes to refuel the machine. It's also very safe and very clean, but also it's a nozzle. It, it's familiar to the customers. You plug yeah. it in and um, you can have a good plug right. in yourself. So we take the dust cap off. Right, stand back. 
and we push that on forward and then we rotate that round all the way. All right. And that's it. And if you just wait there, I'll start right. the process and we can right. make the noise. Right. So I suppose you don't need a, yeah, there's no little donkey engine power in this, is it? It's the, because that's 500 yep, yep. and that's all, 350. All, all through depressurization. And yeah. No gravity is required. You can hear the hydrogen now flowing in. Right. So again, it's a familiar process. It's very undramatic, really. I haven't got a gauge, so I don't know if that's so, so full. The refueler stops when it's at the, the, the right pressure. But you can see we're flowing in relatively fast. As I said, it's a matter of minutes to go from empty to full. And then that's reduced downtime for the machine. And the customer can then drive off and continue his working day. Right. Need to later in the day, come back, refuel very quickly. You've got time to make a cup of tea, but you haven't got time to drink it. That's, that's how fast right. it is. Fill, and time, fill time, six or seven minutes, yeah, exactly minutes. the same as... as and you can reason. part fill. I can turn it off and yeah, yeah, you can turn do it off whatever. And stop it when you want and, yeah. and then move forward. So, so where am I in here then? So dispensing. So dispensing I'm, at the moment. So you see the dispensing yeah. line as it goes up there. Uh, yeah. And it will that's that down. one there, that's isn't that it? One. So 150. So we'll, yeah. So we'll... Um, say it will be full when that says 350. 350. I see. Okay. And one of those must be empty. Yeah, and if you'd like to come back to the machine just for a oh. second, we'll show you just removing that um, that refueling nozzle. Right. So we spoke about that that purge effect in your head. Right. So when I release the nozzle out, you can hear that noise. That's it. No hygiene on your trousers. <laughs> dust cap on. Start the engine, and off you go to continue your working day. Fantastic. And Good. now, as Tim said, we can now take that refueler, yeah. shut the door, drive to our next machine, another quarry. Yeah. And keep refueling throughout the day. So everything, yeah, seems to work this end, isn't it? It's getting the hydrogen to that is the yeah, next well, we, stage, well, we, isn't we, it? We've perfected the engine, and then we've yeah. we perfected the engine within the machine. Then we start to understand the tanks and how we supply on board the machine. And then now we're working our way back through the system, starting to get a refueler. So we feel really comfortable with how, the, we, how we supply the hydrogen to the machines every day. Yeah. And then as the tube trailers come in, we want to work our way back all the way to the electrolyzers. And, and pressures, it's all new tech and I'm trying to get my head around it, but it's the pressure that's delivered to you is at what pressure when they deliver at the moment? At the moment, some, some trailers are 200 bar, some trailers are 350 bar. So right. at the moment we would compress. So you have a, a separate compressor. You have to supply that compressor at the moment to get that to 500. Yeah, so the tube trailer comes in, we run it through our compressor into our, into our modules. That's a pain, isn't it? It is, yeah. What, yeah. We, what we want is the, is the higher pressure delivered. Um, you want that at us. 700 or yeah, something like that? Say. Anywhere, 650, 700 would be fantastic. And is that the same worldwide then? Everybody's doing it at a low pressure, 200 then? No, I, th I think um, traditionally for years, it's been steel tube trailers. Yes. Tended to be 200 bar. Right. We're now seeing a lot more um, both carbon fibre and, and other certain designs that can run at 350 to 400 bar. Right. We've also now started to see, for example, in the USA, people um, delivering on liquid. And uh, uh, you can get a lot more on board, you, right. almost the same fluid level as liquid to uh, hydrogen to diesel. Oh. So, so we, we're, we're quite excited about the opportunity to carry more, increase the pressures. Right. They're at 700. Yeah, yeah. So, dare I say, well, why have you stopped at 350 on there and not at 500, say? Well, the, 500. I think the truck world will get very much into 350 bar. It's right. a very usable pressure. The hydraulics in our machines are at 350 bar. Okay. So we feel very comfortable. Right. It's, it, it's okay to have 700 bar, but I think 700 bar will take a lot of compression. So the right. car world had done 700 bar, probably to allow the fitment of a, of a tank in a, in a very small area. Right. But actually the amount of work you have to put to go to 700 so bar, you use well, energy to charge to, to a get thousand to bar to decant to, I see. Then, it, then it's very, very high. And you actually have space on a machine, and if you're getting more than a day's running from it, yeah. I suppose that's makes, what you yeah. look for, isn't it? And then of course, if you're at 700 bar, the carbon mm. wrap on the tanks is, is more than twice as thick. Right. So the tanks get a lot more expensive okay. because it, it's proportionally more difficult the higher the charge. So that's the target for 350. Good. Good. That all, all makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Thank so you very great much. Great start and we're very comfortable with refueling now. So yeah. what we'd love to do is to take you to see a, a telescopic handler, a GSEV load all. Go back to farming stuff. Good. I like that. <laughs> yeah, I recognise so this, this one. So this is the famous GSEB load all. Yeah. Um, so this is um, 
used in both construction and as you're aware, agriculture. Yeah, we like these. So it's fantastic impossible machine. to go gardening without one of these. Yeah. I don't know how people do it, you know, stuff like that. Now, this, that you put the tanks here, that looks quite low to me. Yeah, so this is our very, very first um, attempt at the time. We, um, we could only get tanks that were slightly larger. Right. So this is very much prototype number one, but as you'll see very shortly, the machines that, that head towards production are absolutely back to the exact same oh, ground see. clearance. Absolutely right. perfect um, in both ground clearance, in performance, in the ability to dig. Exact yeah. same characteristics as, as the existing machines. Is it? So we can look at the engine on this one. Yeah, it yeah let's secret? go around and have a, have a look. It's and within this, we've got um, the engine installation. So you'll know the engine installation pretty well. Yeah. I think this was the uh, third prototype engine that we built in the very early right. days. So we've been out running and testing it, doing quite a few hours now. And um, really, really exciting that it uh, fits in exactly the same location. It's same curling pack, same bonnet, exactly same the same cooling. Base, I thought it exactly ran exactly the same. Really? So intercooler all working the same. Yeah. yeah. Exact you same. You don't have to upscale. Exact no. same characteristics. Good Lord. Yeah, because you have to really look to recognise it, wouldn't you? You just see the spark plugs, you know, the actual coil packs on top. Yeah, but yeah, again... Hydrogen, where's the hydrogen coming in? That's... So it comes into your rail system. Is that it? That so, no. yeah, at the far side, we, uh, we bring the supply in at the opposite, opposite end through, right. this, through this rail. Oh, and then that inject, rail there, injected this, this through. big rail here. Yeah. Right. Spark plugs are here with your yeah. coil packs on top. Just like a modern engine. So yeah, and the, I, yeah, they were saying the servicing's the same as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Five hundred hours. I mean, one, one of the one of the real exciting things <laughs> is a machine right. that's done several hundred hours. Well, you don't carbon. The oil, of course, yeah, no carbon. There's no carbon. So no. perfectly clean oil. Quite amazing. Isn't that weird? Obviously, the oil still degrades, but yes. uh, but, but again, it always if stays you, clean. If you look at the engine, so if we were to pull this engine down, strip it down, completely clean inside. That Quite is incredible. interesting. Carbon-free engine, superb. So the engines might last longer then, I suppose, wouldn't it? I don't know. Well, lack of service, yeah, as you say, the oil would break down from the pressure, isn't it? But So as long as we've got the oil in it, 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 it we would change it at the same service intervals. But again, it, it's the cleanliness of the oil. It's, it's quite fantastic too. That well. is interesting. And, and can you imagine seeing an engine stripped down and it looks looks as good as it was when <laughs> yeah. you put it together? Yeah. It's, it's I quite don't incredible. know engines like that. No, yeah. that's good. Right, can I have a go in this then? Yeah, certainly. I just want to yep. hear it because you say that it's a different sound. Yep. So we'll put that bonnet down and we'll um, we'll get the keys. Right. Now we've swapped the mic on the cameras because I just want to hear this running because Jim, you're saying it sounds slightly different. Yeah, so you don't, with it, with it no longer being a compression engine, diesel, yeah. and moving to a, um, a spark ignition, that it's much softer, so you don't get that necessarily explosion sound. What you will he um, find on the hydrogen engine is, yeah. because you're using a lot of air and a small amount of hydrogen, you hear a bit of turbo noise, which right. we're refining. Um, yeah. And again, you'll, you'll see here that, that oh, our exhaust shit. system is actually uh, pretty much an air vent, similar to what you've got in your kitchen. Yeah. That, um, that literally expels steam. I couldn't believe it because I was looking for the exhaust. So it actually run, it's just naturally quieter engine yes, than yeah. a diesel engine. Naturally and uh, much softer. Right. Okay. Well, should we hear it? Yeah. Okay. We'll have a, have a run. Very, very sweet, very um, very gentle. Yeah, that's the same. Yeah, <laughs> I recognise that. The, the dominant noise really is the is the turbo when yeah. it's uh, is it sucking in. Yeah, it's working. And it's really fine that will start to reduce that output. Pretty much exactly the same yeah. in terms of uh, well, the machine to work and operate. It's a pretty good day. We're not getting much steam out. It's right. um, it'll just come out as. Uh, it's kind of clear air today. That's a cold start, would have more steam then. Yeah, it? yeah, it's yeah. much cooler. Especially if there's a lot of humidity around yeah. it, it'll create more steam. Yeah, good. We're all right, mate. That's it. Well, I noticed just when he started, there was a slight delay. It's more crank. 
needed or yeah, something. Yeah, I, th I think. A couple of rotations. I mean, I, I wouldn't worry too much about that. I say, one, it's our very first prototype in a load hall, so yeah. some of the software is very, very early. We're, we're pretty good at perfecting that. So but as we start to run our test machines um, that's the out and stuff. about, that's what we really that's refine. Really so we, we do love to perfect noise. We tune it, tune the machines, and yeah. things like the start procedure. All, all of that will will right, really okay. refine to uh, to perfection as usual. All right. Thanks very much, Tim. That's great. Thank you. Well, I found that fascinating, and I hope you did too. My takeaways from that day was they are going full on for hydrogen. There's no going back. They absolutely see it has all the advantages they hope for for a new powertrain and for having zero emissions beyond diesel. Uh, they've investigated battery. The thing about JCB, they did actually try bat where well, they do build battery excavators, small ones that they use sort of in enclosed spaces and that sort of thing. And they've also tried fuel cells. But the key thing with their earth moving machines and diggers and excavators is they work with heavy load for a too long a number of hours for batteries to cope. How are you gonna charge a great big 20 ton excavator doing HS2 railway line in the middle of nowhere for eight or 10 hours? The operators just can't do it. Hydrogen means all those, all those worries have gone and yet you're still zero emissions. And it's also interesting that this drive for one dollar for one kilo of hydrogen could make running our farm equipment even cheaper than it is today with on red diesel. It's extraordinary how it's changing this idea that hydrogen does answer a lot of um, the problems with trying to power heavy equipment with uh, batteries. Another takeaway is I wonder when the UK government are going to wake up that battery and electric is not the answer for everything. They can't just tick a box and say it's going to be electric, there we are, done. Now it's going to sort something else out. It's going to be a multi-pronged approach to reaching net zero. All these machines have different requirements and they're not all answered by being battery powered. Final takeaway was those emerging markets like India have been at the fore for converting to hydrogen because there are a number of countries that could really invest in solar and suddenly it's like having an oil well, oil reserves in your country. They all get sun, they've got access to water, therefore they can do electrolysis and produce hydrogen and they can convert their fleet of machines to um, build the structure of the country to hydrogen which they're producing themselves. Suddenly they're not reliant on having to buy in oil and gas reserves from someone at some neighbour makes a huge difference to their balance of payments. So intriguing, amazing. I take my hat off to JCB how far they've got. They've, they've just ticked the box for the engineering. It's just the structure and how we get hydrogen and how we can produce green hydrogen in all over Europe and other countries to serve these new machines. But for me, it seems the absolute answer to how we're going to power these sort of machines, combines, HGVs, etc., into the future. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, well, keep watching, keep subscribing. More videos coming along very soon.